Hi and welcome. Thank you for joining me for part two of New Beginnings and in particular your new beginnings. In part one we talked about the promise of God in John chapter 3 verse 16 and that was the promise of eternal life if you believe that Jesus is our Lord and Saviour. And in part one I gave you the opportunity to take that step. And if you did that, the good news is that you will be going to heaven. If you didn't take that step, then why not go back to part one and make that commitment now? If you're like me, when I took that step, I looked around and, and wondered what happens next. So in this video, I will try and answer some of the questions that you may have about what just happened when you made that commitment, what happens next, and also how can you build on your faith and also the new relationship you have with Jesus. So first things first. When you made that prayer to God, you did it in faith. Faith that Jesus really did die for you. Now, faith in Jesus will sustain you on this journey that you're embarking on. The promises that he makes to you will help you to gain wholeness and peace. And isn't that what's been missing? up to now so let's look at what just happened to you well you literally became a new person Jesus said we must become born again and this is what he was talking about once you make Jesus your Lord and Saviour there is no way that you can carry on living the way that you used to. Why would you want to? But of course you don't instantly change. At least I didn't. But it happens as you go through life. So the most important thing is not to think this is the end, that you're going to heaven, job done, but believe me, it is truly only the beginning. For a start, you are not on your own. At the very moment that you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, the Holy Spirit was sent to you by God. Jesus told his disciples before he was crucified, but the Helper the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So the Spirit of Jesus lives inside each one of us, helping, comforting and teaching us all things. The Apostle Paul spoke about what the fruits of the Holy Spirit are, which means these are the results of having the Holy Spirit inside you and allowing him to guide you. These are the qualities that the Holy Spirit will guide you towards. They are love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Now, in addition, there was an exchange that took place on the cross. The exchange of your sins for Christ's righteousness. Now, righteousness means being right with God. So you are now right 
with God. So when God looks at you, he sees what he sees when he looks at Jesus, which makes you a child of God. Please don't underestimate this. We're talking about God Almighty sees you as his child. By taking the step of making Jesus Christ your Lord and Saviour, you have accepted that you cannot do life by your own strength. I don't have to tell you how things turn out when you rely on your own strength to just survive. Now you can rely on Jesus. But to rely on him, you will need to know just what Christ says, what he commands and what he promises you. Now, you could guess what they are. Rely on hearsay, on things you may have heard, or even take my word for what Jesus is telling you. The problem is, that is my faith. Jesus has so much more for you to find out. Now, I think my role is just to point you in the direction of Jesus. And the most wonderful thing is that your faith will grow. But there is only one way that it will happen. And again, it is the Apostle Paul who says in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. In other words, read the scriptures. I urge you to pick up a Bible and start reading it. If I could give you another suggestion, start with the book of John. But before you do, ask the Holy Spirit to help you understand what you are about to read. He will do that for you. After all, Jesus said he would. Develop a habit of reading the Bible each day. Believe me, you will learn so much. Now, any father, including me and possibly including you, wants to know all their children's news and to advise them as they grow into maturity. Your Heavenly Father is no different. So involve him in your life. Talk to him and tell him all about your heart's desires, all about your fears, your hopes and your dreams. Now prayer is the way to talk to God. Talk to him each day. You don't have to be in a church or on your knees to pray or involve him in your life. It's good to remember that Jesus said, that the only way to the Father is through him. Jesus is your advocate and intercessor and speaks on your behalf to the Father. So when you pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Another good thing is to mix with like-minded people. You might find some people don't like the new you. I found that I was changing gradually over time without realising it. While some people didn't like it, I did. I liked the new me. So mix with people who like what you are becoming. I would advise you to go to a local church that teaches the Bible. And I know what you're thinking, probably what I was thinking before I came, became a Christian. Churches are full of religious freaks or goody two-shoes people. But actually they're full of people just like you and me. They're not perfect, but flawed in many ways. So it's a great way to learn more about Jesus with like-minded people. 
plus a good thing is that a lot of churches have tea and cake after the service for me that's a good thing <laughs> lastly if you stumble and fall for temptation or sin in some way just confess your sin to god do it straight away and you can be assured that you will be forgiven if i can just illustrate that many years ago i was a professional ballroom dancer when I first became a Christian in 2015, I used to fret about sin. What should I do? What if it was too bad to forgive? It went on and on and I kept asking God in prayer for his guidance. And eventually he spoke to me and he will speak to you through the Holy Spirit. If you listen he said that sin was like ballroom dancing now I immediately thought oh no ballroom dancing is also a sin but he said if we were dancing together and you stepped on my toes would you apologize to me and I said of course I would he then said, I would accept your apology and forgive you. But I would then say to you, let's try that step again. But this time, try your very best not to step on my toes again. And that made complete sense to me. And I hope that it makes sense for you also. Now I pray that I've answered some of the questions that you might have. But if I could give you any advice at all, the best way to get into a swimming pool is to jump straight in. And it's the same with being a Christian. Don't be timid. Be bold. Your new beginnings are going to be awesome. Goodbye for now and may God bless you. Goodbye.